Hello, hello. Okay, hello, hello. Okay, very good, Oscar. I got your message. Rosemary, driving, Rosemary. Yes, teacher. Okay, good. When you get home, tell me, please. When you get home, please. Check, check. Okay. Check, please. <laughs> okay, good. So, and let me see who's going to be a listener today. Okay, let me see. Um, okay. Um, Carla Benazir, right? Okay. And Aminda. Good. I mean, it's going to be a little bit late, right? Okay. I'm gonna wait for the rest of you. Hello, hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, who is it? Who is it? I'm Wendy. Ah, Wendy, hello Wendy. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Only you and for the moment, I don't know what happened with the rest. Everybody's coming late. Um, maybe. Um, maybe. There are six ah. connected. Okay, good. So I have Vanessa and Rosemary is driving. Oscar is coming late. And, and that's wow. it, right? Okay, let's start with the class. Oh. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to a new class, right? Today is July the 7th. And the topic for today is recognize the components of the place and promotion strategies of a national product, right? Good. So to start, we're going to, as we always do, we're going to start with uh, some question, right? <clears throat> so, and the topic for tonight is shopping. Oh, shopping is good, right? Especially for ladies, ladies who like the shopping, right? Okay, so let's start with Vanessa. Vanessa, what springs, que viene a su mente, right? What springs to mind when you hear the word shopping? I don't know about the first thing that I thought. Springs is, is uh, que viene a su mente, que viene uh, a su mente. Uh. The, the first is um, clothes. <laughs> clothes. When you hear yes. shopping, clothes. clothes. Yes. I don't know what, why, but this is the first thing that I thought. Close. Okay. Nice. And Wendy? Yes. What about you, Wendy? Um, 
What is the first me, idea? What is it? Shopping. Um, shoes. Clothes. Shoes. <laughs> shoes and clothes. <laughs> Very good. Very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Nice. This is correct. Yes, it's normal, right? Uh, and anybody else is in the group? Ahorita solo alcanzo a ver a Vanessa en la cámara. No sé. Um, no sé por qué no me permite ver a los demás. A Wendy no la veo. ¿Quién más está en, en clase? Help me, please. Ayúdenme, por favor. Bueno, entonces solo vamos a estar con Wendy y con Vanessa, right? Ok. Me, mister. Ah, who? Ah, Chamba. Hello. Chamba, hello, Chamba. ¿Y por qué no lo hello, veo, Chamba? Mister. No lo veo en el, en el... ¿Será que mi cámara no abarca? ¿Tiene encendida su cámara, Chamba? Chamba, hello. No, mister. No, no. Es que estoy, estoy terminando de, de cenar. Ah, good. Continue, continue, Chamba. Conti don't worry, continue. In a moment, right? Después participa, Chamba. Don't worry. Okay, hey, uh, so Chamba is sitting and Rosemary is driving, so only listen, right? So, okay. Uh, I Wendy, help me. Sorry? If you want it, teacher. I can't answer it. No, 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 Rosemary. It. No, 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 no. No, please. Pay attention to the street. Pay attention to the street, please. <laughs> I don't see traffic right now, no, actually. No, no, but no, please. When you drive, you drive, please. It's very dangerous. <laughs> Only pay attention, but thank you, Rosemary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, Wendy, please. In your opinion, Wendy, is shopping a real hobby? Yes or no? Uh, in my opinion, no. Uh, at least mm. for me, because for me, it's boring. Oh, you I don't just like went to the yes. mall. Wendy, I'm sorry. Did you say, well, <laughs> you don't like shopping? Yeah. Are you okay? Do you have fever or something? <laughs> yeah it's for it i just went to the mall and buy all the things that i need and come back to my home because like it's for me wendy like we men do all the time when we want something we just go buy the thing and come back home right i don't exactly, know when, yes <laughs> when i see a chair let me see it's okay ah yes let's go right but <laughs> yes, usually you know exactly. usually women uh, check the colors check the size <laughs> take the offers etc yeah. etc so for you it's not a hobby and vanessa for you is not for me it's your opinion real me, teacher no no i also. don't i don't like it what? Shopping. excuse yeah. me i let prefer me do other things maybe my, my camera is having problem in this moment let me check <laughs> Two I prefer women, go to, to eat. <laughs> we two women that don't like shopping. My goodness. No, I don't like. Okay, the world <laughs> is going to finish. The aliens are coming to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer okay. go to eat something. Oh, okay, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but this question is for you. Listen, Vanessa, why do women, not you, not Wendy, of course, but most women, of course, most women. So why do women like shopping more than men? Why do you think is the reason? For me, it's because, because the women are detallista. I don't okay. know. How do you say detallista? Careful. Oh, careful. Careful. Uh, mm -hmm. um, they, li uh, they, they like... Um, buy things to to their houses and to decorate and something uh -huh. like that. <laughs> yes, you're right. So every time you go to Dollar City, you want to buy ah, everything, yeah. right? <laughs> ah, so I like to go to, to Dollar City. <laughs> ah, okay, you see. <laughs> now you're I like. <laughs> little by little, it, we are discovering the real Vanessa, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. I like to... Good. Uh, shop I like. <laughs> okay, yes. Very good. So what about you, Rosibel? What why do you think women like more shopping than, than men? Why is that? Rosibel, welcome to the class, Rosibel. Why do you think uh women like shopping more than men? Rosibel? 
Okay, so Ever, please welcome Ever. We're talking about shopping, Ever. I imagine you I don't like shopping. Right? Hi. Okay, I imagine you don't like shopping, right? Yes. Yeah, you like shopping? Oh. Only, only we need something. No, no, but, but okay. Wait, wait, Ever. Wait, relax. When I mean shopping, is that you go, you take your time. You see things you you like to buy. You buy a lot of things. Uh, sometimes no. things that you don't need, like Vanessa in shopping in, in Dollar City. <laughs> okay, so that is that is shopping. I right? got it. Yeah. Understand? No, in fact, I'm in fact I hated the 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 usual thing. The act to to go to go into the shopping. I hated. Yeah, and, I imagine. But I, I, I know uh, some friends that will love it to go into the shopping. No? He spend a lot of time of a show of uh, shoes, uh, wear something, uh, whatever the stores. Uh, yeah. They're going to uh, a little trip to one mall, uh, whatever. I imagine. The gallery, <laughs> yes. I imagine, right? But so in my your, case, but, no. in, but in my case, I hate it. Okay. Maybe women are more simple in general, right? We are more simple, right? Jorge Alfredo, yes. do you like yes. shop, to go shopping, Jorge Alfredo? Jorge? Okay, so I'll continue with uh, Domingo, please. Domingo, do you like to go shopping? Shopping. Yes. Uh, to buy shoes, to buy clothes, to buy parts of your car, to buy uh, cell phones, to buy, I don't know, all products in the store, right? to Dollar City, to Shopping Center, to Prisma, to Sara, to Simán, to... Ah, um, um, yes, um, uh, um, I, I had a, uh, by shopping uh, my, my personal product, Mm -hmm. For example, the, uh, the deodorant, uh, shampoo, razors. Yes, razor, uh, 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 perfume. In, 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 in plaza, in, in, in market, in, is it? Ah. Small, in small, is a... Uh, I chore the store and store juice juice to the for boots 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 uh -huh. boots is okay Even. nice sorry Domingo I I believe I Okay, very good. So, uh, Carla Vanessa, help me, please. In your opinion, Carla, what, when is the best time to go shopping? Thank you, Domingo, thank you. Okay, Carla, please. Hi, teacher. Thank you, Hi. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, that's okay, that's okay, don't worry, don't worry. Pay attention, Domingo. Pay, pay attention. So, Carla, please. Hi, teacher. Hi, hello. Uh, when is the best time to go shopping? Uh huh. In your opinion? Maybe, um, in my opinion, maybe in the in the week. Not During in the, the weekend. Week. Weekend or During week? the week? No week. Week from Monday to Friday. Yeah. Why is that, Carla? Sorry that. Remember, women maybe are because the, the... <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe because the malls are. Uh, less crowded than weekends. I understand. 
I understand. Yes. Okay. It's a good idea. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, Jorge. Hello, Jorge. Hi, Jorge. Look at this question. Do people always need to go shopping? It's absolutely necessary to go shopping, Jorge. What do you think? What is your opinion? I'll, Sorry, teacher. I will repeat the question. I will repeat the question. Do people always need to go shopping? It's absolutely necessary to go shopping, yes or no? What is your opinion? Um, yes, no, yes. no, 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 okay, no. Come on. no, Online. no, not absolutely necessary, right? Not necessary. Okay, good. Yes. Well, in my case, when I like to go and to buy something, I I just see the product and the next time I go and buy it and go home, right? Immediately, right? If the person said, no, we don't have it. Okay, good. Thank you. Goodbye. That's it, right? But uh, maybe like Domingo said, right? To buy razors, uh, deodorant. Uh, sometimes it's, it's necessary, right? But to buy clothes, to buy shoes, to buy... I don't know, uh, dresses in the case of the women, right? Or, or blouses. I don't know. Well, you know, a lot of things to buy, right? But okay, you know, my opinion said, yes, it's not, not all the time necessary, right? Okay, now, uh, Walter, do people always need the things they buy when they go shopping? In general, right? Of course. Uh, hi teacher, hi. good evening. Uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, no, because no. Uh, some people buy buying with no with necessity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, we what to say impulse or impulse? By impulse, yes, by impulse. By impulse, yes. Yes, and they, sometimes they don't need it, right, like Walter? Uh, one example that even men, women, oh, sometimes we do that, they, that we go to Dollar City, right? And sometimes we need we buy things that we don't need, right? Yeah, but by impulse. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 a principal method of the market a principal method supermarket are put, put these, these things or object mm -hmm. near to the to the to the when you pay. Uh -huh. uh, okay. This this is the way this is the way to 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 buy in this 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 object. Okay. And Sometimes people buy using the credit card, right, Walter? This is another topic, of course, but uh, uh, when they say, I don't have the money, but uh, I, need, I, I need that blouse. I need that blouse. It's necessary for me. It's beautiful. It's, it's not expensive. Come on. So I will use my credit card, right? Do you think that is common, Walter? I think so. It's very common uh, because no nobody uh, learn learn to us how to use the credit card. Okay. Uh, when when we have a credit card, we need to to have a high responsibility. I understand. Uh, because it's a uh, it, it, you you pay with money, no no it's not. Okay. I totally agree, right? But please don't give these commentaries to, to Claudia Guadalupe because she works in a bank, you know? So shh, don't say it. <laughs> it's a secret, it's a secret. <laughs> okay, Debbie, uh, welcome. Do you prefer uh, going shopping alone, only you, mm -hmm. Debbie? Or do you like to, to go with your friends, with the amigos? <laughs> Going shopping alone? 
or with your friends? Um, I don't like shopping, teacher. Ah, no, no. I, I don't have passion. Today we are going to have a big storm in El Salvador. Okay. El Salvador will disappear <laughs> because in this class I have three girls that don't like shop to go shopping. I can't believe it. No, come on. Even Domingo. Domingo <laughs> said he likes to go shopping. Imagine. Okay, anyway, but sometimes you have to go, right, David? Mm, yes. Yeah. A long thing. A long, I think a long. A long, long yes. Right? Yes. Like we say, uh, we men say this, al mandado, right? So we men don't yeah. like to spend time, right? I imagine. <laughs> I imagine ever buying in in Siman, for example. So, oh, oh, this this color. Okay, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> okay, but I imagine Domingo buying in Botas el Charro, right? Because he likes to buy <laughs> oh, this color, this side. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, Carlos, uh, in your opinion, which is better, shopping in shops or shopping online, Carlos? Mm. Uh, this depends. Okay, tell um, me one example. Um, for example, shopping in shops when you need clothes, to a shirt, pants, or something you need to to a specific uh, size. Uh -huh. and, okay. And, you need to try it opinion, on, right? The, try it on. Yes. Mm, uh, yes. In see, in the best way is just try it on the the clothes. And shopping online, this is better for um, shop um, um, food or or something. Do you need to try on? Try on. Like for example, a uh, uh, cell phone lightning, right? Un cargador de teléfono, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, and oh. or, or cell phone or 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 a tablet. cup mm -hmm. or yeah, dishes so. or or tools, right? You know, Carlos, that you right. like to repair things in your house or maybe, right? Maybe. Okay, yes. let's go to the last question. Uh, the last question is for um, Vanessa again, please. Vanessa Noemi, what is the worst shopping experience you have had? Worst shopping experience? Mm -hmm. mm, I don't remember. When you were trying the grapes, La Suba, right? In Super Selecto. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Um, okay, so what was the, the worst experience? Someday I someday I I buy uh, I bought a coffee that the price was like four or five dollars. <laughs> Four or five dollars. Uh -huh. And yeah, and then the COVID uh, didn't like me. <laughs> ah, okay. So, <laughs> I understand. So like we say in El Salvador, lo barato a veces sale caro, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Well, that's I it. I don't right? remember that's other. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't remember <laughs> other experience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes mm -hmm. we have bad experiences when, when we go shopping. And we have. Um, many things to say about this right but we're going to continue tomorrow talking about the same topic shopping but for the moment we're finished do you have any extra commentary class okay good good that's it right now we'll take the attendance uh, pero le voy a suplicar un favor y voy a pecar aquí de ignorante porque este Aquí en mi cámara yo los veo, ¿verdad? Y cuando los veo les hago preguntas. Pero a veces me contestan y no los veo. Entonces entiendo que no está la cámara encendida. Así sería, ¿verdad? Va, entonces vamos esta noche a tratar de tener nuestra cámara encendida toditos, por favor, para, para que yo los pueda ver, ¿verdad? Porque <ríe> especialmente cuando repetimos, quiero ver que estén practicando. Así sí, que... Sí. Es un requisito en Safor, a excepción de, de Rosemary, que viene manejando, ¿verdad? Y, y, y Chamba, porque está todavía eh, con el pancito y los frijolitos todavía, ¿verdad? <ríe> ok, pero uh, los demás, por favor, me encienden su, su cámara para yo verlos. 
Repito, Rosemary, tranquila. <ríe> no se preocupe, vea el tráfico. Especialmente si va a la parte de un microbús de la 42. <ríe> tranquila ahí, ¿verdad? Ok, good. Let's go to the attendance. Eh, Trini. Ok. Uh, Aminda. Ana María. Ana María. Carlos. Carlos. Present. Ok, good. Thank you, thank you, Carlos. Eh, Claudia Guadalupe. Ok, thank you. Eh, Domingo. Thank you, thank you very much. Ever. Present teacher. Good, thank you, thank you very much. Jose Roberto. Jose Roberto. Oops. Ya me afligió porque somos bastante que no, no están ahorita. Bueno, eh, Carla Benazir. Me manda el mensaje. Ah, aquí, aquí está el mensaje, permítame. Vamos a ver. Ah, ok. Thank you, thank you, Carla. Thank you. And... Carla Vanessa. Present. Good, thank you. Laisley. Laisley. Ok, give me a second. Okay. Okay, let me see. Let's continue. Uh, Leticia. Present teacher. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Mariano. Oscar. Oscar. Ah, okay, good. Ya, ya llegó casito, Oscar. Qué bueno. Ya casi, ya casi. Okay, good. Ah, va manejando. Entonces, tranquilo, tranquilo, ¿no? No me va a distraer ahí. Yes. Eh, Rosemary también va manejando. ¿Eh, Rosemary? Present. Ok, good. Thank you. Rosibel. Present. Teacher. Good. Thank you. Sonia y Beth. Ok. Vanessa. Vanessa Noemi. Present. Teacher. Good. Thank you. Walter Omar. Here, teacher. Thank you, Wendy. Present. Good, thank you. Thank you very much, Wendy. Vicky, Vicky Dinora. Miriam. Chamba. Present, mister. Good, thank you, Chamba. Debbie. Present. Good, thank you. And Jorge. Jorge Alfredo, George. Jorge, lo, lo, lo acabo de estar viendo, Jorge, no sé si está ahí en la cámara, permítame, quiero ver, para tomar la asistencia, Jorge. Uh, no, ya no lo veo en cámara, bueno. Acaba de estar, pero vamos a tomar la asistencia porque ya hasta participó, ¿verdad? Ok, let's continue, class, let's continue. Don't stop, come on. We have a lot of material to, to cover tonight. So you need to. Carlos, please, would you like to read the objective for tonight? Okay, you need to marketing. I will be able to analyze the components of the product and, and price strategies of a famous national product or service. Good, thank you. And here we have the vocabulary, right? Here we have the vocabulary. Now we're going to do something. We're going to practice pronunciation. Give me a second here. We're going to do something. Mm, I'm going to try something here. Uh, I want to, if you tell me if you're watching the presentation, right? Yes, yes. Okay, give, give me a second here. Okay, good. 
Now I will go one by one. Vamos a hacer una cosa muy especial aquí. Quiero uh, que practiquemos la pronunciación. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Ok, eh, no ven el, la pantalla de Google, ¿verdad? No se ve. No. No, no, ok, excellent. Very good. Very good. So now, I'm going to start with eh, Carlos, please. Listen and repeat, Carlos. Listen and repeat. Symbol. Ok. Symbol. Escucha, Carlos. Yes. Yes. Okay. Symbol. Listen and repeat. Symbol. Symbol. Okay. Very good. Symbol, right? Very good. Next one. Give me a second. Next one is identity, right? Identity. La vez pasada no me costó mucho, pero hoy sí me está costando. Ok, now, eh, please, eh, Domingo, listen and repeat, Domingo, listen and repeat. Identity. Identity. Uh, Justin. Ok, very good. Give me a second here. Ok, next one. Mm -hmm. Next one. Okay, uh, Ever, please listen and repeat. Listen and repeat, Ever. Capability. Okay. Capability. 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 Capab Capability. Capability. Okay, good. Again, last time, last time ever. Capability. Capability. Okay, excellent. That's it, right? That's it. Nice. Give me a second, the next one. Okay, next one is going to be uh, um, let me see. Carla Vanessa, please listen and repeat, Carla Vanessa. Distribute. 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 Okay, good, excellent. Distribute. Distribute. Distribute, right? Okay, next one. Next one. Okay. Uh, uh, Leticia, please. Leticia, listen and repeat, Leticia. Provide. 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 Okay, excellent. Excellent. Good pronunciation. Provide. Good pronunciation, yes, good pronunciation. Now give me a second here. Eh, esta palabra me la preguntaron en, en el WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Pero vamos a practicar la pronunciación. Ok, let me see. Mm, Oscar Arnulfo, please, Oscar. Listen and repeat. Hardware. Hardware. Oscar. Ah, Oscar va manejando, ¿verdad? Perdón, perdón. Ok, so, Vanessa Noemi, please. Yes. Hardware. 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 Hardware, okay. Hardware. Hardware, very good. Hardware. Suena un poco español, la verdad. Ok. Esta sí la voy a decir yo. Vamos a ver. Eh, 
Let me see. Uh, Walter Omar, please repeat after me. Repeat after me, Walter. The wear and tear. The wear and tear. Good. The wear and tear. Very good. Veo que se has, ya se conectó Trini. Hello, Trini. Okay, Trini, listen and repeat, please. Give me a second. Okay, listen and repeat, Trini. Eco friendly. Eco friendly. Eco friendly. Okay, nice. Good pronunciation. And the last one, right? The last one. Good. And let me see who's going to help me. Debbie, please. High end. High end. High end. Okay, nice. High end. Nice. Very good. Now let's come back. Ahora regresemos a la presentación. Good. So now I will read for you, right? I will read for you. Listen. Symbol. It's a noun, right? A mark or character used as a conventional representation of an object. A mark or character used as a conventional representation of an object, right? In this case, for example, remember yesterday we were learning about LG, right? The L and the G are together, so this is a symbol, right? Or the Mercedes-Benz, for example, right? Also the, well, the Sony, Nike, for example, they have a symbol, right? So it's a mark that is uh, representing an object, right? Identity. Identity is a noun. The fact of being what a thing is. For example, you have your identity. You are a woman, you are a man, you are Carlos, you are Domingo, you are Wendy, so you have an identity, right? the fact of being what you are, okay? So that is identity. Capability. Capability is a noun, right? Is the power or ability to do something, okay? So if you have a capability to, uh, to learn English, right? You have the power or you have the ability to learn English, right? To do this or to sing a song or to drive a car, et cetera, et cetera. Capability. Distribute, distribute is a verb, right? To give shares, you know, partes of something. You know, remember the Lord Jesus, right? He distribute uh, fish and fish and bread, I, I remember, right? And for everybody, you know, Ooh, for everybody. So distribute, distribute, right? Provide, to make available for use. For example, I'm providing you this PowerPoint presentation. I'm making available this presentation for you. I'm providing you this presentation. Hardware. Hardware is a noun, right? Uh, sometimes it refers to, to the part of the, of the computer, the touchable parts of a computer. But in this context, hardware means tools, you know, herramientas, machinery and other durable equipment like you know refrigerators tvs uh, hammers printers etc etc hardware right the wear and tear is a noun right is the loss injury to which something is subjected by or in the course of use it means that for example if you have a car the wear and tear of the car is that with the use, the car is becoming old with a lot of scratches, or sometimes in a parking, some somebody hit your car, right? You know, uh, or the tires have a use, right? So that is the wear and tear. Like we say, el, el desgaste por el uso, right? The wear and tear, understand? Okay, eco-friendly. Eco-friendly is something that is, a friend of the environment, right? I don't know, uh, 
for example, there is an air conditioning that is eco-friendly, right? Or, or some cars that, well, not, not exactly, but they promote that, right? That they are eco-friendly, right? Good, high end. High end is something that has a superior quality. For example, let's say um, Samsung, uh, Nike, LG, uh, iPhone, uh, Lamborghini, <laughs> Ferrari, you know, okay. So those are things that are high end, right? Superior quality or so sophistication and usually high in price, you know? So the things that are expensive are traditionally the best, right? Uh, like Vanessa was saying, right? That she had a bad experience with coffee, right? So sometimes if you buy a, a, a very cheap coffee, <laughs> well, it's not very good, right? But if you pay, so you got the best coffee, you know? So high-end coffee or in general products that are, you know, very good, right? Very good. And there are a lot of products that are, you know, uh, not very good quality, huh? you know, understand? Okay, good. So microphones off, please, everybody. Listen and repeat, listen and repeat. Symbol. Identity. Capability, distribute, provide, hardware, hardware. Give me a second, please. Okay, sorry. My dog is playing around, so <laughs> I had an accident, sorry. Okay, good. Continue, please. Listen and repeat. Hardware. The wear and tear. The wear and tear. Eco-friendly. High-end. Okay, good. Now we're going to review some vocabulary. I'm oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, do you have any extra question? For the vocabulary, we're going to use this vocabulary tonight. But do you have any extra question? Teacher, can you repeat the word for the, what does it mean? Which one? One, two, three, no, Ooh, no, sorry, no. one, two, two. One, two, number, two, three, four. Number six. Number six. They wear and tear. The meaning is that when you use a product, the product uh, for the use, the product is, is being destroyed. Or let's say, for example, a, a refrigerator, right? A refrigerator is not forever. Maybe two years, five years, right? But because of the use, uh, you need to replace the refrigerator, right? The same happened with the cars, right? The cars become old and you need to substitute your car. Why is that? Because the wear and tear of the product. Understand? Okay, good. Thank you for the question. Any other question about the vocabulary, pronunciation or meaning? If you want, I can translate into Spanish if you want. No? Okay. So now let's go to the class today, right? Product and price vocabulary. Product and price vocabulary, right? Remember, we have four P's, product, price, placement, and promotion, right? Good. The placement, you know, the place, sorry, is the distribution, right? The distribution is the same, right? Now we're going to learn some vocabulary related with the product and price. 
So now I need you help me reading, right? I need you help me reading. Jorge, can you read the first one, please? Product design. Jorge Alfredo. Teacher, you have your camera off. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Give me a second. Uh, okay, give me a second. Ah, uh, oh. And okay. Yes. Now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jorge, please, can you read for me? No, okay, good. So, Debbie, please. Debbie, help me, please. Uh, product design to create a new product to be sold by a business to its customers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Any question about this? About this vocabulary? Product design, you know, this is a word that is related with the product, right? Product design. Mm -hmm. So product design is to the creation of a product, right? The creation of the burning of a product, right? Yeah, yeah. So the it's a new product, right? Understand? Okay, good. Next one. Chamba, are you there, Chamba? Can you read this for me, please? After sales services. After sales services to help and information that is provided to customer after they have both a particular product. Thank you very much. So it means that, especially for cell phones, uh, stoves, refrigerators, air conditioner, cars, uh, printers, uh, what else? Machinery in general, you know, industrial products, um, uh, equipment in general, right? Computers, for example, right? So after the company sell the product, they help the customers to continue with the product, right? So after you buy the product, you need some some um, reparation or some pieces of the of the of the product, right? Okay, good. Now it's next like one, please. To, Sorry, it's like to warranty. Le well, it's part. The guarantee oh. is part of, for example, when you buy a printer, uh, Rosibel, well, it's in El Salvador, tell me that, that is difficult, right? It's not good because it, it, they are recording this class, but for example, I have bad, bad experiences in Prado, for example, personal, right? I cannot tell you, but the guarantee in some places, for example, it, it's, not very, it's not very good. But normally, well, in the United States, for example, this is like the, ooh, the law, right? It's, this is something, uh, you know, like the Bible, like the Bible, that if they give you a guarantee, they have to give you the, the assurance that you're going to have your product back or your money back, right? Because remember, in the United States, everything is commercial. But in El Salvador, ooh, it's a problem, right? Is a problem, but yes, the guarantee receivable is part of the service that you receive after you buy the product, right? After you buy the product, okay? Good, thank you, Rosibel, for your commentary. Now let's go to the next one, brand, right? Uh, Wendy, can you read, please? Brand, the use of a name, term, symbol or design to give a product a unique identity in the marketplace. Good. A unique identity. Can you imagine? For example, let's say uh, Canon, printers Canon, right? Or uh, Valdez or, or for example, in shoes, we have a lot of shoes, right? Adidas, uh, Nike, Nike, right? Uh, Adok, well, Adok, yes. Um, Bracos, you know, in Adobe. 
Uh, what else? Uh, all the stars. You know, I love the, the all stars <laughs> shoes. Okay, so this is a, a unique identity, right? There is not a repetition, right? In fact, in El Salvador, right, there is a register, right? Hay un registro, okay, a national register. So where you take your product and you register your product. So other people cannot copy that, you know? So the brand is a name. Like, for example, we say Rosibel, right? Rosibel is a name. And Rosibel has a Dewey, right? So she has an identity, like a person. So the same happened with the products. They have an identity, they have a name, they have a symbol, right? Uh, and in that way, you can distribute this product in the marketplace, right? Okay, and let's go to the next one, please. Features, features or characteristic, right? Um, Walter, please. Walter, can you read, please? Yes, <clears throat> features, characteristics of a product that describe its appearance, components, and capabilities. Cap capabilities. 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 Yes, it's a very difficult uh, pronunciation, right? Capabilities. Good, thank you. So now, the features are, for example, in a, in a cell phone, for example, right? In a cell phone, you can, uh, you can use the cell phone to communicate with other people, right? This is the principal use of a cell phone, right? And this is one characteristic of a cell phone. Mm -hmm. The appearance of the cell phone, right? The colors, uh, the structure, the form, you know, the, the texture, the texture of the product, right? Uh, with a mouse too, look, I have this mouse. So the characteristic or the appearance of the product, right? And the components of the product, right? The components, those are the features and the capabilities. What can you do with a cell phone? What can you do with a pen? What can you do with your shoes? What can you do with your computer? Huh? What is possible? What a, what a car does, huh? The car takes you to one, to another place, right? What a printer does, a printer prints, you know? <laughs> okay, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the features, the specific, the specific components, appearance and capabilities of every product, right? Okay, the characteristics in general of the product. Good, and product positioning. Product positioning. So let me see who's going to help me. Uh, Vanessa Noemi, please. Can you help me? Product positioning. The process of creating an ima image of a product in the minds of the cons consumers. Consumer, right? At the beginning of the class, I, I asked some, some of the students, what comes to your mind when you, when you hear shopping, right? And some of you say, clothes, shoes, right? And what happened in your mind when I say, for example, when I say, um, uh, what, what can I say? Sony, Sony, when I say Sony, what, what do you have in your mind? TV. TV. <laughs> Sorry? A cartoon. TV. TVs, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so why is that? Because uh, Sony has a position, has an image in your mind, right? When when I have when when I say Herbalife, for example, right? Herbalife. When I say, uh, for example, uh, Adidas, right? Uh, Tommy Hall feature. Um, mm -hmm. When I say, for example, Toyota, right? Toyota, when I say Toyota, Mercedes Benz. So mm -hmm. they have a position in the market. They have a, a, a place in your mind, right? A, a position because they have 
for years they have produced this product, right? Oh, other product that is very common, McDonald's. When you hear McDonald's, ah, oh, okay. So it, an image is creating in your mind, you know? Okay, and of course, this is the most difficult part to do because to create an image in front of the customers or the consumer, right? It's come on, very difficult, right? It's not very easy. So that's it, right? Those are the, the words that relate to the product and price. Product and price. Product design, after sales services, brand, features, Product positioning, right? And that's it. Any question? Because we're going to use this vocabulary tonight. Any question? Okay, listen, class. Uh, this vocabulary is um, related with unit two, marketing, right? And the four Ps. I know sometimes we, we're confused with, for example, me, I get confused with vocabulary. Yeah, when we have to learn a lot of things, right? I remember me in third grade, you know, uh, las tablas de multiplicar, for example, was a problem for me. The, in sixth grade, you know, the capitals of the word. And now these words, you know, product design, uh, capability, you know, uh, the four P's, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a lot of vocabulary, but, Let's make a general picture, right? <clears throat> At the beginning, we were discussing in unit one how a product is created, right? Now in unit two, marketing, we are uh, learning or we are studying how, how to move or how to create a product in order you sell the products and, and consumers buy your product, right? What are the four the, the steps? So in this case, we're learning about four steps, right? Price, I mean product, price, place, and promotion. By the moment tonight, for example, we are continuing studying only the product and price today. Only that, right? For the moment. Good. And we are going to go to the manual. So please let's go to the manual. I'm gonna share with you if you don't have any question. Let's go to the manual. Okay. So again, we have these words. We are on page 20 in the manual. Product design, after sales services, brand, features, product position, right? Now, it's time, it's time to work, right? So what are you going to do? Match the words or expression to their meanings, right? So number one, what is number one? Number two, et cetera, et cetera. So I will give you, because we already practiced this, I will give you two minutes, two minutes to, to find the answer, right? Okay, it's time to work. It's time to work. Do you understand what we're going to do? Much, right? To put the numbers here, the numbers here, right? Okay, go ahead, please. Two.
Thank you, Carlos. Now, everybody ready? Let's start with number one, product design. Can you give me the definition, Carlos? To, to create a new product to be sold by a business to its customers. Thank you very much. Number one is, like Carlos says, create a new problem, right? To create a new problem. Thank you. So it's the burning, it's the maternidad, the primero de mayo of the product, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, the product is new and you are creating this product, right? Good. Number two, after sales services, please, volunteers. Uh, uh, Ros Rosibel, okay, again, sorry, Rosibel, again, again. Okay, the health and information that is provided to use the customer after they have bought a particular product. Congratulations, I, I don't have my belt today, sorry. Se me olvidó la campanita, Rosibel. But clean, <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good, thank you. For you and Carlos, clean, clean. Okay, so this is the one, right? After sales services is this, number two, right? Number two. Good. Number three, brand. Volunteers brand. A brand, the use, the use of the name, term, symbol, or design to keep a product a unique identity in the marketplace. Okay, thank you, Ever. Cling. Okay. So is this one, right? That is the brand. The use of a name, term, or symbol, right? You know, that we are surrounded by symbols, by, by brands, you know. Everywhere you go, uh, for example, here I have a Canon, I have a Argon, I have a Dell, I have iPhone, I have ah, a lot of products around, around me. So I imagine in, in your house, you have a lot of brands, right? A lot of brands. So it's the characteristics that show the name, term, symbol, or design of a product. Good. Number four, features. Volunteer for features. A feature. Uh -huh. Feature uh, characteristic of the product that the price it is, it is Operations, components, uh, and compatibilities. That's it, right? Capabilities. Compatibilities. Uh, components, components and capabilities. Compatibilities. Cap capa capabilities. Capabilities. Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Cling. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. That's number four, right? And the last one, please. Easy, right? Product position, right? Volunteers? The process of creating an imaging of a product in the means of the customers. Very good. Creating the image in the mind of the clients, of the customers, or the consumer, right? Okay, thank you very much. Good, any extra question? I repeat, this vocabulary related with the product and the price, you know, the product and the price. Now we're going to continue with the manual. Exercise number seven. Okay, guys, listen. Here we have some specific questions, right? We have some specific questions. Uh, now what we're going to do is to practice with these questions and to give some, some examples, some example how to use this question. Give me a second here. Okay, I guess this is it, right? Okay, but before to continue, my goodness, it's nine o'clock. The time is flying, right? So attendance, please, I repeat, at this moment, I guess 
everybody can turn on the, 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 the camera, right? Eh, si ¿sí le puedo suplicar que me enciendan todos la cámara, por favor, please. And let's start with Trini. Ladies and gentlemen, Trini, attend us, please. Present. Good, thank you. I see you, Trini. Okay, nice. Aminda. Aminda me dijo que iba a entrar tarde a la clase, pero todavía no ha entrado, ¿verdad? Ok. En Ana María. Ana María. Ok. Carlos. Present. Good. I see you in the camera, Carlos. Very good. Eh, Claudia Guadalupe. Claudia Guadalupe. Ok. Uh, Domingo. Present. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ever? Hamza. Good. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Jose Roberto? Okay, good. Thank you, Claudia Guadalupe. Me imagino que todavía está en el, en el banco, todavía, ¿verdad? Ese trabajo muy difícil, pero qué bien que está de listener. Okay. Eh, mm -hmm. Carla Benazir. Carla Benazir. Ok, thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Ya copié el mensaje. Ok. Carla Vanessa. Good, good, thank you. Laisley. Present teacher, oh. I'm driving. Good, no problem, no problem. Cuando llegue a casita me avisa, Laisley. Ok. Ok, le, que le noté la asistencia, no me preocupe. Ok, okay. Let, Leticia. Present teacher. Good, thank you, Leticia. Eh, Mariano. Mariano. ¿Qué le pasó a Mariano ahora? Mm, ok. Eh, Oscar. Present. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you very much. I see you, Oscar. I see your camera. Thank you. And Rosemary. Ya llegó casita, Rosemary. Present teacher, yes. Yes. Oh, good. Excellent. Thank you, Rosemary. Bien bonita la imagen de la cámara, Rosemary. Buena cámara tiene ahí, ¿verdad? Thank you. It's the fun. It has a good camera. Ah, okay. No, excuse me. The brand. The brand. <laughs> okay. My camera is very strange, right? It's like oblique. You know, it's... I don't like it, but, you know. Let me see. Uh... Ah, ok. Eh, I got your message, Claudia Guadalupe. Ya, ya recibió el mensaje, Claudia Guadalupe. No se preocupe. Este, en el caso de Claudia Guadalupe y Carla Benazir, espero que la otra semana puedan ya incorporarse, ¿verdad? Este, recuérdense que con todos tengo que hacer la entrevista de 10 minutos. Este, esta noche quería tener la entrevista con Ana María, pero creo que no está presente. Vamos a ver, eh, Leslie, ah, Leslie va manejando. Rosemary, ¿cree que podemos tener la entrevista esta noche, Rosemary? I think it's okay. To... It's okay for you, good, thank you. Thank you very much. Good, thank you. Now I have another message. Okay, good. Thank you, thank you very much. Let's continue, please. And Rosibel. Yeah, that's my teacher. Good. Yes. <laughs> nice, Rosie. Thank you. Eh, Sonia Ibeth. Sonia Ibeth. No. Oh. Vanessa Noemi. Vanessa, teacher. Good. Thank you. Walter Omar. Yes, ma'am. Good. Wendy. Present. Good. Vicky. Vicky Dinora. Uh, okay, Miriam Veronica. Chamba. Present, Mister. Thank you. Ah, oh, okay, excellent, Chamba. I see your your camera. Your camera is very very good too, Chamba. I like it. The image is Thank very you. clear. Congratulations. Good camera, Debbie. Present. Good. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much. 
Jorge Alfredo. George. Jorge. Okay. Good. Thank you. Now let's continue. Let's continue, right? Good. Present teacher. Ah, good. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you. Thank you. Ya le tomamos la asistencia. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Thank you. Now let's go to the this question, right? I want to start with uh, Trini. Trini, can you read the first question, please? Read the question for the class. How Trini. will you distribute your product? Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, Carlos. Who are you selling? Who are you selling to? Thank you. Next one. Domingo, please, can you read this question for the class? What value do you provide your customer? Thank you very much, Domingo. Ever? What are you selling? Thank you. And finally, please, uh, Carla Vanessa, please. Can you read the last question? Oops, sorry, sorry, excuse me, excuse me. Estamos, yes. Okay. Carla Vanessa. Carlita. Okay, Leticia, please. Okay, so Oscar, please. How will you price your product? Okay, good. Price, money, right? Now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? In this moment, we are going to go to these five uh, situations, right? Five situations. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Okay, let me see. Yes, good. So what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to copy one of these questions in every situation, right? So number one, for example, I will help you with number one. We build quality kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customer, right? So I don't know, like refrigerators, uh, microwave ovens, uh, stoves, etc. It's hardware, hardware. So in this context, we have five questions, right? So when I'm talking about kitchen hardware, I'm talking about what? How will you distribute your product? Who are you selling to? What uh, value do you provide your customers? What are you selling? Or how will you price your profit? I what think are you selling? What are you selling? What are you selling? Cling. Okay. What are you selling? Correct. Because you are selling kitchen hardware. Okay, good. So I will give you one minute, I guess, right? No, two minutes. Two minutes to complete, to match these questions with these uh, examples in the real life, right? Okay, class, two minutes. Come on, go ahead.
Okay, ready? Or you need more time? More time, please. More time, okay, good, no problem. Two more minutes, come on, go ahead, continue, continue. Okay, ready? Any question about vocabulary? No, okay, good. Yes. Yes, everybody's ready, okay, good. So number one, uh, Ever read number one again, please. We know the answer, but please read. Read number one again. Read the answer. We build the sentence, quality the sentence and the answer, right? The sentence and the okay. I think at the at number one. Um, the sentence says, How would you distribute your product? No, 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 and number my one, answer... no, sorry, excuse me, uh, Ever, we build, we build. Uh, we build, we build quality kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customer. Good, thank you, hardware, right, hardware, uh -huh. and what is the answer, what is the question you have to make when you want to, to uh, price or, or distribute your product, right? I think, uh, what are you selling? What are you selling, right? Listen, listen, ever. Okay, I have my belt. <laughs> okay. Are you fine? Correct. Correct. Very good. Number two, please. Our customers are young North American family, families who want kitchen hardware that can stand the wear and tear of young children. Very good. Imagine young children, they are destructive, right? Dogs and children are destructive. Any product, right? Especially so fast. You know? So what is the question we have to make? Who are you selling to? Who are you selling to, right? Who is your customer? Who is your target? Huh? So in this case, young North American families. Very good, thank you. Number three, please. Ah, sorry, excuse me. Remember the meaning of wear and tear, right? Wear and tear is a el uso o el desgaste del producto, right? El desgaste del producto por el uso constante, you know? So that's the wear and tear, the wear and tear. In this case, I repeat, who destroys everything at home? Children. Who paint your walls? Children. <laughs> okay, who are artists in the walls? 
your children. <laughs> now, number three. Volunteers for number three? Me, teacher, Debbie. Okay, Debbie. Come on, Debbie. They are interested in material that are safe for children and, and eco-friendly. Eco? Eco? Eco-friendly. Eco mm, so what is the question, Debbie? What value do you provide your customers? What value do you provide your customers? That's correct, right? So in this case, uh, it's part of your conscience, right? Um, that you have to create a product that will help people. I don't know, for example, uh, uh, the, the Ford company, let's say, for example, the Ford company, right? They are producing cars or products that will save the life of, of, of a person, right? So it's not only to, to get the money, but you are interested in, in, in that the materials or your product is going to help people, right? So that uh, your customers have are important for you, like 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 person, you know, not like not like you don't see people like dollars walking, right? <laughs> no, you see people like people, you know. Okay, the value. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, yes, teacher. Good, Rosibel. Eco friendly is a uh, take care of the um, environment. Mm -hmm. The environment. I will show you again the the presentation. You, you want to to see it, right? Eco friendly. Look. It says, adjective, not harmful to the environment, not destructive for the environment. That is eco friendly, right? Rosibel, most of the time, honestly, it's. It's just the promotion only, right? The real life is that, mm, well, no commentaries, no commentary, but yeah. Um, for example, uh, in my opinion class, uh, the disposable plates and cups made of cellophane, right? Cellophane, I guess, is the material, the vaso desechable y, y, y plato desechable, right? So um, in El Salvador, we, we, we use this product a lot. And this product takes like thousands of years, right? Toma miles de años para incorporarse al, al medio ambiente, right? So, you know, so my personal recommendation is uh, don't buy disposable plates and, and, and cups and, and, and forks or, and knives, you know? De todo hay, no? Cuchillos, tenedores. Vasos, platos, todo it desechable, right? And you eat, right? and then you throw it, right? And you can see this day, for example, that we have uh, the Hurricane Bonnie, right? That all the streets suffer because we only throw the product, right? And the, okay, sorry to, to talk about this, but it's not the topic, but we have to take care of the earth because our children are going to, to receive this planet in the future, right? Not for us, for our children, do it, right? Okay, number four, we sell our products through a retail channel, right? Retail is venta al por menor. Venta al por menor, right? Volunteers? Me, teacher. Please. Leti. Leti, come on, Leti, go, do it, do it. We sell we sell our products through a retail channel. And the question is, what are you selling? Oh, oh, what are you selling is number one, right, Leti? Remember? Oh. Yes, I will repeat. Number one is, what are you selling? Number two, who are you selling to? Number three, what value uh, do you provide your customer, right? So we have only two questions. How will you price and how will you distribute? For you, Leti, what is the correct answer mm. for number four? How will you price your product? Let me see. We sell our products through, uh, vendemos nuestros productos por medio de canales de ventas 
al por menor, right? O por la vía de la venta al por menor. So, this refers to price. Leti, what do you think? It refers to money? Or distribution? Distribution. Um, money? Money? Mm. Mm. Okay, Rosemary? Is distribution, I guess. How will ah, you okay. distribute? Distribution, okay. Letty, do you agree? Estamos de acuerdo, Letty? Sí, yes, I yes. agree with okay, Rosemary. Rosemary. And you agree with the teacher too, right? <laughs> okay, thank you, Letty. Thank you very much. Okay, so we sell our products through, a través de, right? Through a retail channel, right? Thank you. And the last one? Okay, please go ahead. Uh, our products are priced per unit and are considered high end hardware solution. Hardware, hardware solutions. Good. So, what is the question? Um, how will you price your product? How will you price your product? Totally agree, right? So, listen, the teacher and Dino. Agree, right? Dino, do you agree? Okay, very good. So that's it, right? Now, repeat after me, please. I will read again every situation, right? And I will read again every question. And then you repeat after me, okay? Ready? Here we go. Microphones off. We build quality kitchen hardware Sorry, we build quality kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customers. Again, we build quality kitchen hardware for residential kitchen customers. The question, what are you selling? What are you selling? Our customers are young North American families who want kitchen hardware that can stand the wear and tear of young children. Young. This is something like nye, 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 you know, young, young. Can stand. Can stand. Que puedan soportar, que puedan aguantar, right? They wear and tear. The wear and tear. <clears throat> the question, who are you selling to? Who are you selling to? Three, they are interested in materials that are safe for children and eco-friendly. Eco-friendly. The question is, what value do you provide your customers? What value do you provide your customers? Four, we sell our products through a retail channel. Through? Through retail channel. The question is, how will you distribute, distribute, sorry, your product? How will you distribute your product? The last one, repeat, please, repeat. Our products are priced per unit 
and are considered high-end hardware solutions. High-end hardware solutions. The question is, how will you price your product? That's it, right? So any question? So we finish the price, the product and price. For tomorrow, tomorrow, sorry, for tomorrow, we're going to talk about place and promotion. Place and promotion. Tomorrow, right? So tomorrow we are going to continue talking about the four P's. The four P's. Now we cover, we finish with product and price. We finish all the ideas about this, right? Good. Tomorrow we're going to continue with this place and promotion, the other two P's. Any extra question? Any extra question? No? No. no look at price. We finished, right? Now we're going Teacher. to. Yes, tell me, tell me. Uh, Don Domingo, teacher, is, yes, uh, Domingo, the, yes. I'm following the pronunciation, the pronunciation, the, the sentences and number four. So. Pronunciation? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, which number one? Three. These ones? Yes. Esta Domingo, yes. Esta. Yes. number they, three. They are, uh -huh. they, they are right interested. Ah, inter good, good. I will repeat, listen. They uh -huh. are interested in materials that are safe for children and eco-friendly. Okay, now only you, Domingo, repeat, repeat, come on. They are inter interested. No, 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 interested. Interested. Good. Give me a second, interested. please. Give me a second. In the in Give materials me a second. that are Okay, wait, Domingo, wait. I will do something here. Give me a second. Ayer Oscar me dio una, una idea, así que hoy la vamos a usar. Vamos a ver. Okay, yes. Estamos por aquí. Esta es. Okay. Good. Uh, ¿Alcanza a ver la, la pantalla del Word, Domingo? I see. Sí. Okay. But, tenemos tres pronunciaciones. Vamos a hacerlo un poquito grande. Yes. And here. Good. Number one, we have the, the, right? The. For example, learned, right? Number two, we have for example, work. And number three, we have the pronunciation. Id, id, right? For example, interested. Interested, right? Okay. Domingo, with... Uh, a uh, past participle, right? En pasados participios, que son usados como en presente perfecto o como adjetivos, right? For example, here, interested. La palabra interested es un pasado participio que es usado como adjetivo. Estoy interesado, you know? Interesado. Okay, good. Uh, y uh, también en el pasado simple de los verbos regulares, el pasado simple, ¿ok? We have three pronunciations, tenemos tres pronunciaciones. La letra D, la D, 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 la letra T, 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 t y la letra ID, que, que suena como ID, ID, ¿ok? Esta es cuando el pasado participio <coughs> o el verbo en pasado simple termina en un sonido voceado, como la N. Aquí tenemos la N, es un sonido voceado. N, N. Entonces decimos, 
learn, learned. Learn, learned. ¿Ok? Y si el sonido, perdón, el sonido es no voceado como la letra K, aquí, work, k, 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 no es voceado, no se usa la voz para decir esos sonidos. Entonces vamos a decir el sonido y decimos work, work, presente work, pasado o pasado participio, work. Y en el verbo interest, que termina en una letra T, todos los verbos regulares o pasados participios regulares que terminan en T o en D, vamos a agregar el sonido, Domingo, id, id. Entonces vamos a decir interested. Interesting. Ok, good. Entonces tenemos tres sonidos. The, t, id. Repeat, please. Everybody. Learned. 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 Worked. Worked. Estoy exagerando un poquito, pero para okay. que usted lo entienda. Ok. Interested. Interested. Good. That's it. Right. Ahora vamos otra vez okay. al, a la pronunciación. Y sería. They are interested in materials that are safe for children and eco-friendly. Ok, Domingo. Only you. Only you. Ok, come on. Go ahead. The, they are interested in materials that are safe for children and ec, ec, eco. Eco. Friends. Eco. Eco. Eco friends. Eco friends. Good. That's it, right? Okay. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Alguien más? Any question? Pronunciation, vocabulary, etc., etc. Estamos en la orden. <laughs> yes? Okay, good. So today we're going to finish the class with a video, right? With a video. So we're going to practice. Let's share this. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to practice with culture, right? And listen, we're going to learn about some people that uh, make gestures, right? Gestures. I will read for you. Look, picture yourself riding in an elevator alone, right? What happens when someone else enters the elevator? Imagine you are in, in, in Plaza Mundo, in Galerias Escalón, whatever, right? You are in the elevator. And what happens when another person enters the elevator? Where do you both stand? Okay, imagine the person is entering, right? La persona va entrando al elevador y usted, like, okay. <laughs> so, do you make eye contact? Se le queda viendo usted a la persona, yes? So, where do people stand when there, there are four people? Now, not only one, but now four people in the elevator, okay? Imagine that you enter a crowded elevator. Look at the picture, for example, right? A crowded elevator, right? a lot of people, right? Face everyone, it says, make eye contact and smile. <laughs> okay, smile. What would people do? What would they think about you? They are unspoken rules for riding an in an elevator. And just as there are cultural rules for how close we stand to people, the gestures we use, and how much eye contact is polite. But there is one gesture that is universally understood, a smile, right? Okay, whatever you go, class, there are some rules, right? For example, eye contact. You cannot watch the person for much time, right? If you are in a commercial center, you are in a clinic, you are in an elevator, wherever you go, please don't, don't stare at people too much. No se le queda viendo mucho a la gente porque van a pensar mal de usted, right? <laughs> so, or, but according to the article, there is a universal 
eh, message that everybody reacts, right? Nadie se puede resistir a una sonrisa, right? Wherever you go. Okay? Good. Now, let's go to, to this question. In El Salvador, what gesture do you use when you meet someone for the first time? Carlos, please. Can you help me, Carlos? What gestures do we use when you meet someone for the first time? Mm -hmm. mm, I think I I remember. I, I smile and you smile. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> <Like> <laughs> this, <right? laughs> yes. Okay. Do you check the hands? Do you check the hands? Mm, not usually. No, no. Well, especially today because of the coronavirus, no, right? Okay. Uh, like... Ever imagine you meet an old friend, right? From from a school, right? For example, right? How do you give? Yeah. Uh, sorry, how do you greet? How do you say hello to your friend? I don't know. Uh, what's up, man? Only hey, what's uh, up, bro? <laughs> hey. hey, what's up? Do you give yeah, a hug? Because... Ever do you give a hug to your friend? No, only with no. the hand. Oh, only the hand. Oh, maybe like this, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, ever. Oh, before. Before, before uh, of the coronavirus, uh, uh, a big hand, a preton, how to say? Yes, like this, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, we Salvadorian have this special way to say hello, right? With, in other countries, it's like this, but in El Salvador, like this, right? Yes, nice, Ever, thank you. Now, in El Salvador, in your opinion, right? Let me see who's going to help me. Rosibel. Ah, Aminda, hello Aminda, ya, ya está con nosotros, ok, thank you Aminda. Ah, hello. sorry, no he pasado asistencia, ¿verdad? La segunda vez, o oh, sí, no, ya pasé, yes, yes sorry, yes, solo nos falta una vez, excuse me. Thank you Aminda for coming to the class. Now, Rosibel, what gestures are considered rude in El Salvador? I imagine that Rosibel is thinking in one, one finger, right? Rosibel ya está pensando en el dedo de en medio de lo... <ríe> no, Rosibel. No, no. No, okay, in El Salvador, what gestures are considered rude, offensive, eh, Rosibel? Um, uh, gestures. Uh, this is... Like this, right? Oh. Like this, uh -huh. like this. What else? Mm. Do you think, Rosibel, look at me? Mm -hmm. uh, crazy. Uh -huh. Okay, crazy. good. Especially uh -huh. when you're driving, right? <laughs> when people yeah. are driving, use the, they use the finger. <laughs> you don't do that, eh? You don't do that, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Rosibel. Thank you very much. Good. Now, the body language, right? The body language. We have these people. Give me a second. Yes, here, right? Okay. Good. Here we have some images. Some images of some people uh, showing the... Some... some um, I say, give me a second here. Sorry. I, okay, good. Which word do you think uh, best describe the people below, right? Number one, nervous or friendly? Friendly, right? Okay. Number two, bored, uh, bored, right? Or interested? Uh, Jorge, what do you think? This person is bored or interested? Okay, so Debbie, please. Bored or interested? What do you think? Okay, so Aminda. Casi no participaba Minda. Le vamos a hablar. Oh, 
Le later. Okay, uh, Carlos, number three for you, Carlos. So, Aminda, the man is bored or interested? Uh, in my opinion, is interesting. Interested, right? Like when, when there is a, an accent in Salvador and we go like, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Carlos, number three. Okay. Confident or lazy? I think it's confident. Confident, right? Okay. Number four. Uh, Chamba, please. Approachable or surprise? Chamba? Sorry, mister, I can't alone. Okay, good. So can you see the picture, Chamba? The number four, number approachable. Four, please. Uh -huh. Approachable. Approachable, very good. And the last one, please. Very approachable. Uh, someone that is, uh, you can reach someone that is, how do you say in Spanish? It's like someone that, uh, accessible, accessible, right? Someone that is accessible, right? Accessible, good. And give me a second, please. Uh, ah, the last one, right? Number five, confused or sincere? Uh, Wendy, please help me. Confused or sincere? Um, sincere. Sincere. Okay, very good. Now we're going to see the video the video related to this. Give me a second. Give me a second, Glass. Permita un segundito. Um, yes, okay, the video. Now the video is talk about some people on the street and how people react, right? How people react. Let me see this here, right? Okay, give me a second. Here I'm in Boston. My trip has been really fun and interesting so far. I've gone on walking tours, which taught me a lot about the history. I ate some really good clam chowder. I went to a baseball game. But I think the best thing about Boston, the street performance. So what'd you think about his act? I was amazed by what he could do and all the things he could make out of balloons. Yeah. This man is really talented. It makes you feel like you're a child again. I think yeah. adults and children both really enjoy what he's doing. It's exciting to walk by someone on the street and suddenly they're just making something creative out of a balloon. Oh. What do you think about street performers? I was pleasantly surprised to come to the park and find street performers here. What words would you use to describe that performance? Uh, exciting, amusing for Kate. Amusing? Yes. yes. How do you think she felt? Oh, she loved it. I was amazed by the talent. I didn't realize that there was so much talent among the street performers in Boston. It definitely made me feel alive and energized. So what did you think of his act? Uh, well, I thought it was fascinating. How did you feel about his performance? I thought it was great. I thought he did an excellent job. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. What is it like playing for the general public? I like it. I enjoy it. Um, it's satisfying. Could you play us something of your own? I'd love to. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
This has been such an amazing day. These performers were so talented. I want to be one. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Okay, that was the video. And now give me a second here. Okay. So we're going to analyze this video together. Let me see what time is it. Yes, we have about seven minutes, right? Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. I introduced this part, but the real part is about uh, street performer, right? This is the one, right? Good. So I'm going to read for you. Sweet reform, right? Look. Good. Uh, visitors to Boston, Massachusetts, right? Should not miss the Fenjul, Fenjul Hall Marketplace. This is the place, right? Okay. Uh, it is one of the United States top tourist sites. The historic marketplace opened in 1742 and was a market and the site is uh, of famous meaning, right? It is near the water and there are many restaurants and shops for people to enjoy. What makes the marketplace really exciting though is the free entertainment. Every day the marketplace fills with street performers and the people who come to watch them, right? So this is like similar to Centro Historico in San Salvador, right? Okay, now let's make this exercise together. Give me a second here. Okay, vocabulary number two, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Good, that's it. We have an acrobat. An accordion player, a balloon man, a clown, a dance troupe or dance company, and a magician, right? Okay, let me see. Let's start with this a little bit. Okay. That's it. Okay. Number one, for example. Number one. What is number one? Is it a magician? Is it an acrobat? Clown. What is it? A balloon, balloon man. A balloon? Man. A balloon man. So this is the one, right? Number two, an acrobat. Number three? An accordion player. Accordion player, right? Okay, good. So this is a balloon man, an acrobat, and accordion. Mm-hmm. I'm not very sure about number one, but let's continue. Number four, what is number four? A magician. A magician, correct, right? And number five? A dance a, troupe. A dance troupe or a dance company, right? There are many performers on the street that they dance for the people, right? And number six? A balloon. A balloon man, right? This is yeah. the balloon man. So this is the yeah. clown. Uh -huh. This is the clown. You know, sometimes the, the clown makes some balloons too, right? But in this case, this guy is like someone that is dedicated to that, right? Okay, now we're going to make another exercise. Another ex exercise right here. Uh, remember the video, right? Uh, in the first min minute of the, the video, okay, we're going to guess who is the host of the video, right? Quien es el um, que anima el video? So it's a reporter, a tour guide, or a tourist. Let's watch the, the video for one minute, right? Again. Let's watch the video again, right? Okay, without sound. Le vamos a quitar el sonido. Yes. Okay, now let's watch it.
Okay, that's it, right? According to what you saw in the video, the guy is a reporter, a tour guide, or a tourist. A reporter. Sorry? A, a tourist. A tourist, right? The man is a mm -hmm. tourist, and he is describing uh, what he sees in the in the in the in the street, right? In in Boston, Massachusetts, right? Okay, good. And he says, what type of performer under each picture? Is it right? The type of performer under each picture. Which performers did the host talk about? Okay. Now, this is number one. Who is this guy? A clown, an acrobat, accordion player, magician, dance troupe, or balloon man? Accordion player. Okay, good. And the next one? Balloon man. Balloon man. No, number three? Dance, dance company. Okay, oh. dance company or dance troupe. And the last one? A clown. clown. A clown, very good. Now, according to, to the description of the, of, the, of the video, the men talk about two people in the video. Who? Did he talk about the accordion man? Talk a balloon man, Ball, balloon man. Balloon man, right? To the balloon man and to the accordion, right? This, man. Man. <laughs> he, he described this, but the dance troupe, no, right? The clown, no. Okay, good. That's it, right, class? Uh, I have more exercises about this video, but the time is over. The time is over, right? And, and that's it, right? I will take the attendance. Uh, Rosibel, send me a message. I understand, Rosibel, no, no problem. I understand that you have some problem with the internet, right? But I will take the attendance. So, Trini? Present. Thank you, Trini. Aminda? Present. Okie dokie. Ana Maria? Carlos? Present. Good. Have a good night, Carlos. God bless you. Night. Okay. Claudia Guadalupe? Send me the message, Claudia. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And Domingo? Present. Good, thank you. Uh, Eva, please. Present. Good. Good night. Good night. God bless you. Jose Roberto? Carla Benazir? Okay, thank you. Carla Vanessa? Present teacher. Good. Have a good night, Carla. Les Leslie. Present. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, Leticia. Leticia. Okay. Mariano. Oscar. Oh, good night. Good night. God bless you. Rosemary? Present. Good. No se me vaya a ir, Rosemary. Okay, good. Uh, Sonia y Beth? Vanessa Noemi? Present and good night. Good night. God bless you. Uh, Walter Omar? Present. Good night, teacher. Good night. God bless you. And Wendy Karina? Present. Good, good night. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good night. Chamba? Present, mister. Good. God bless you. Have a good night. Good night. Debbie? Debbie? Okay. Have a good night, Debbie. God bless you. Thank you. Jorge Alfredo? Okay, thank you, Jorge Alfredo. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye.
Ok, Rosemary. Ah, Leticia. Yes, Leticia. Uh, yes, the, I take the tenant, right? Good, thank you. Thank you, Leticia. Have a good night. Okay, good. So, how are you, Rosemary? Fine, teacher, and you? I'm a little bit good. tired from my work, but I'm, very good. I'm okay. Good. Uh, so, Rosemary, I don't know if you need that I explain uh, something about the class, vocabulary, any topic that is difficult for you. I think it's complicated because I take so many classes uh, mm -hmm. before this, and the grammar for me is really complicated. Mm -hmm. I actually I don't remember it when I try to speak, uh, especially for the verbs in past participle. I wow. actually don't understand anything about it, but I try and to to apply the all the things that we learn in class, but it's complicated for me right now. Okay, so do you want to review about the past participle verbs? Yes? Would you Actually, like? yes. Okay, because good. I never understand when I have to use it. When do you use the past participle? Okay, I will explain that. We're going to go to the, to the word. Okay, I will erase this. Give me a second. Good, the past part is all right. Okay. Let's start saying that uh, we have many verbal forms. I will combine Spanish with, with English because yeah, for you to make it easy, right? We have many tenses in English. We have, for example, the base form, the base form, right? We have the simple past. We have the past participle. And we have the present participle. Okay, let me see if I can make it. Give me a second here. Do you do you see the do you see my, my screen, Ros, Rosemary? Yes, okay. Yes, but okay. If you good, can... good. Good. So okay, now let's go with a little bit more. Can you do okay? Give me a second because I couldn't understand. No le capté, Rosemary. Creo que el, el internet. ¿Me repite la pregunta? ¿Cree que puede eh, darle zoom un poco más? Ah, un poquito más. Ahorita, ahorita mismo, permítanme. No necesariamente cambiar el tamaño de la letra, sino darle zoom en la barra de abajo. Ah, uh, ok. ¿En la que dice 100%? ¿Por ahí? Un poco más a la derecha. Un poquito ahí. Exacto. Ok, good. Sorry, sorry. With technology, I'm not very good, Rosemary. <laughs> okay, okay. We have this verb, for example. We have regular and irregular verb, right? And then let's start with, with one irregular verb, the verb eat, right? So, and then the simple pass of the verb eat is eight. Sí, I guess I mean. Okay, good. The past participle is eaten. And the present eating, uh -huh. is eaten. Okay, well, what are verbal forms? Well, they describe actions, right? They describe the action. Remember that there are many parts in a sentence, like the subject, preposition, adjectives, uh, adverbs, conjunctions, etc., etc., right? And uh, like in Spanish and like most uh, languages, the verb is very basic, right? And then we use these verbal forms in many topics, simple present, present continuous, present, par uh, present perfect, uh, uh, future perfect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, I will explain this. These are tools to make uh, one specific structure, right? 
like say, let's like say for example, right? The the present continue, for example, right? El presente continuo, right? Imagine, oh, with, imagine with, uh, with the me. present continuous, the topic is a house, okay? Imagínense que el tema del presente continuo es una casa, it's a house, right? And then you want to construct or you want to build this house. Usted quiere construir esa casa, quiere hacerla. And so you need many elements. You need doors, you need the roof, you need the windows, you need many things, right? So the adjectives, the preposition, the verbs, the subject, etc., etc., those are the, the elements of the house. Estos son todos los elementos de la casa, you know? So in this case, the verb, the verb is one element to make one specific topic, okay? Let's take, for example, the present continuum, right? En el presente continuo, este, este verbo más ING, right? Que le llamamos present participle, es como una parte de la casa que usted va a construir, okay? So the same happened here. Lo mismo sucede con el eating, right? Que es do, vamos donde nos interesa aquí. Okay, el eating. So this is used for the perfect form, right? Este es el que vamos a usar para las formas perfectas. So we have, for example, the present perfect, the future perfect, the past perfect, the present perfect continuous, <laughs> okay, etc., etc. Entonces, este lo vamos a usar para las formas perfectas, okay. In Spanish, this is ado ido, ado ido, okay. Cuando nosotros decimos, yo he visitado, yo he comido, yo he bebido, yo he sufrido, <laughs> este ado ido, Rosemary, Es lo que nosotros conocemos como el past pares, o de past pares, ¿ok? Good. Y podemos decir, yo había bebido, yo, yo habré bebido, yo he bebido, yo he, o comido, right? Yo, yo habría comido, yo habré comido, yo he comido, yo hubiese estado comiendo, <laughs> etcétera, etcétera, right? So it's a combination. But I repeat, you use this form in the perfect form, okay? Understand? Imagine this, right? Imagine, imagínense que usted quiere construir cierto tipo de casa, ¿sí? Y es en esas casas que usted va a construir, tiene que usar el pasado participio, ¿sí? Okay? Entonces, la casa se llama presente perfecto, por ejemplo, okay? Para construir esa casa, usted necesita este elemento, okay? Good. Este es el uso verbal de los pasados participios, pero también, y aquí es donde se complica la cosa, podemos usar los, part los pasados participios como adjetivos, ¿sí? Le voy a poner un ejemplo acá, permítanme. Ups. Esta expresión me gusta mucho. The broken wings. ¿Ok? Broke is the verb. Broken is the past participle of the verb break, right? So, but when you use the past participle before a noun, broken, the past participle becomes an adjective, okay? Si usted lo pone antes de un... De un, de un de nombre. Un nombre. Uh -huh, de un nombre. Este se convierte en un adjetivo, right? Adjective. Y este es un nombre, ¿verdad? Now. ¿Ok? So, this is another use of the past participle. Este es otro uso del pasado participio, ¿ok? Entonces, resumiendo. El pasado participio de los verbos regulares o irregulares nos sirve para describir formas perfectas o temas o, o casas, imagínense lo así, ¿ok? Perfectas, ¿ok? Y también nos sirve para describir un nombre. ¿Ok? De past participle nos sirve como adjetivo y nos sirve como verbo. Como adjetivo y como verbo. ¿Ok? Mm -hmm. Do you understand, Rosemary? Yeah, it's complicated. Of course, it's you really complicated. You have to do it because in my case, I try to. 
don't use it because I don't know. No, 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 come on, Rosemary, use it. <laughs> this is very common when you speak. Uh, when you use the present perfect, for example, you have to use it, right? Uh, okay, but I have another question. Do you understand the difference between uh, regular past participle and irregular past participles? Yes, because the irregular yes. is finished in en ed, or ed. En, no ed. And the regulars, the regulars, but uh -huh. the irregulars in en. And the regular they they don't have rules. They are crazy, right? Yep. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Okay, very but good. The regular finish in ed. Ed, correct. Very good. So in the regular verse is easier because it is exactly the same like the simple past. For example, I worked yesterday or I have oh, I worked think. in this company, for example, right? So it's the same, no problem. But what, what I need you understand is that, uh, well, number one is that you have to memorize the irregular past participle, right? And number yeah. two, that you can use this form in a specific topics, right? Okay, for example, eat. Eat is simple present. I eat every day. She eats every day, you know? Ate is the simple past. I ate yesterday, okay? Eaten is used for the present perfect. You say, I have eaten uh, sushi. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the past, perfect, you know? I have eaten a chicken uh, when I went to, to, to the supermarket <laughs> or to a restaurant, yeah, okay? So the position of the past participle is always used in perfect form, right? Understand? For describe a specific situation. What is this specific situation? This situation is a perfect form, you know? Like I say in Spanish, eh, Rosemary, ha doido. Yo he comido, yo he bebido, o yo había bebido, yo había comido, yo había trabajado. So what we know in Spanish, like ha doido, is this past participle. Okay, ¿cómo traducimos el pasado participio? Como ha doido. Sí, fíjese bien en todas las formas verbales en español. Yo he bebido, yo he corrido, yo he trabajado. Todas terminan en ado e ido. Solo hay una como unas dos excepciones. Por ejemplo, yo he, yo he escrito, ahí sí hay una excepción. Pero la mayoría ah. termina en ado e ido. Esa forma verbal que nosotros tenemos en español es the same in English. Eaten, broken, uh, written. Uh, What is the past participle? First participle for the verb run. We have run, 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 and run. The same, the same like the simple past. The simple same. present, sorry. Okay. Okay. The only thing you have to do is to memorize three things, right? Simple present. Simple past and past participle. And keep this in mind. Don't forget that, Rosemary, that the past participle is what you know as adoido. Okay? Other example, for example, is write, wrote, wrote. written, Written. break, broke, broke. broken. Broke. Uh, there to be is or are was, was and where and where and been 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 right been in no been. that 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 is the present participle this is the present participle uh it's this okay no the present participle is used in continuous form Present continuous, past continuous, future continuous, right? Este in, the the in the moment. Aha, uh -huh, correct. Oh, it's a progressive form, right? In the past, in the present, and in the future. 
because we have past continuous. We will be even something. Present continuous, huh? And future continuous. But I repeat, this is other topic. This is otro pisto, como decimos, ¿verdad? But what I need you to understand is the use of the past participle, right? For me, uh, the past participle is the most difficult. I understand the future, the present perfect, the present progressive, but I don't understand the past participle. But okay. I'm uh, more clear with your explanation. Okay, wait. But I, I see something, right? I will say in Spanish. Sorry, Rosemary. Perdón que lo diga en español. But sorry. <laughs> okay, listen. Es que creo que usted se ha confundido con el presente perfecto y el pasado participio. ¿Estoy en lo cierto? Ok. Present perfect is with ENG. No, no, no. Es no, con no, ING, no, ¿verdad? No, no. No, no. Pues sí, los tengo confundido. Yes, ahí sí. Ahora sí, ya, ya, ya identifiqué. Ok. Repito. When you add ing, Rosemary, you talk about progressive forms. Okay? Mm -hmm. Usted habla de formas progresivas. Algo que ocur estuvo ocurriendo en el pasado, algo que está ocurriendo en el presente, o algo que va a estar ocurriendo en el futuro. Okay? Mm -hmm. Present participle. Okay? Pero esta es una herramienta, no es un tema. Y por eso le dije lo de la casa, ¿no? Entonces, el, el tema, el, pre, el presente continuo, pasado continuo, etcétera, es como una, un, son casas. No sé, quizás puse mal el ejemplo, pero en Ajá. cambio que cuando usted habla de un presente participio, no es un tema. Es una herramienta que usted usa en un tema. ¿Sí? Lo mismo, nos vamos al pasado participio. El pasado participio es una herramienta que usted usa para un determinado tema, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Solo es una herramienta. No es, cuando usted le dice, pas pares, bo, ah, ese tema no lo entiendo, no, no es un tema, solo es una herramienta, así como el adjetivo, así como la preposición, así como los adverbios, son elementos que usted utiliza para construir un tema específico, ¿ya? ¿sí? Ok, y en este caso tenemos... El presente perfecto, por ejemplo. The present perfect. ¿Sí? ¿Qué elementos utilizamos en el presente perfecto? Permitamos borrar todo esto aquí. Me cuesta un poquito. Aquí estamos. Ok, vamos a poner una oración para, para que me entienda bien. I have... Eh, run, no, no, algo que se eh, ha written, ha written a card. Ok, so, ¿cuáles son los elementos que hay en este tema? Imagínense que el presente perfecto es una casita que estamos construyendo, ¿sí? Y para construir esa casita necesitamos puertas, ventanas, paredes, piso y todo eso. Entonces, pero en gramática, esto es lo que llamamos, permítanme. Esto es lo que llamamos el sujeto. ¿eh? The subject. Aquí está primero. El primer elemento sería el subject. ¿Sí? Se lo vamos a separar aquí. Subject. Ok. El segundo elemento que utilizamos es el auxiliar. Auxiliar, right? Que en este caso puede ser have o has. Y el tercer elemento que utilizamos es el pasado participio. ¿Sí? Entonces, el pasado participio solo es una parte del de tema presente perfecto. ¿Sí? Solo es una herramienta o, o un elemento que utilizamos para construir el tema del presente perfecto, ¿sí? Vaya, ahora le voy a poner el pasado perfecto, ¿sí? Past perfect. Aquí tenemos she. She had. No sé lo que más separado. She had. Visit, le vamos a poner un verbo regular. Visited. 
is her friend. Her friend, okay? Ella había visitado. ¿Sí? Entonces, aquí tenemos que she es el subject. Had es el auxiliar. Y visited es el pasado participio. ¿Ok? Rosemary, vea que no cambia. Siempre usamos la misma herramienta, mire. No cambia. En Pero el pas en sí, la casita, la Ajá. casita es, es el pasado perfecto. O el Correcto, perfecto. sí. Correcto. Entonces, la casita que queremos construir. Yo pensé que el pasado participio era algo como cuando hablamos de presente, pasado, no, no, futuro. No, 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 no. El pasado participio es una forma verbal que utilizamos para construir formas perfectas, porque si se fija todo va a decir pasado perfecto, futuro perfecto. Eh, ¿Cómo sería en el caso del futuro? Del futuro. She will visit her friend. Bueno, entonces sería el future perfect, ¿verdad? Future perfect. Uh -huh. Vamos a poner day. They will. No sé por qué me lo. Ahí está. Will have. Eh, vamos a poner completed. Oh, eh, algo más broken, ¿verdad? Para que se vea bien claro que es un pasado participio. Broken eh, de, de glass. Ok. Ellos habrán quebrado. El, el, el vidrio, ¿no? Entonces tenemos el subject. Aquí tenemos dos auxiliares, ¿verdad? El principal sería el will y el have sería como un complemento, pero siempre un auxiliar. Y aquí nuevamente tenemos el pasado participio, miren. No cambia. Siempre va a ser el mismo, pasado participio, no. pasado Existe la posibilidad en el futuro de no agregar el hub. O sea, decir que solamente Bien. utilicemos el auxiliar del futuro o siempre tenemos que ponerlo. No, 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 no. Es que como estamos hablando de formas perfectas. ¿Me uh -huh. entiende? Entonces, cada vez que hablemos de algo perfecto es como habré bebido, yo he bebido, yo habría bebido. Entonces, si le cambiamos aquí y le eliminamos el hub, ya no va a ser una forma perfecta, ya solo va a ser futuro simple. ¿Sí? Ah, ok. Aunque estoy ocupando el pasado participio. No, no. Si usted lo usa, va, hagamos una oración de futuro simple, ¿sí? Uh -huh. el, ¿Cuál quiere usar? ¿El going to o quiere usar el will? Usamos will. Para will, que quede con will. Va, Muy bien, este es para el futuro, ¿sí? Esta es otra casita, ¿sí? Entonces, para construir esta casita, necesitamos un sujeto. Vamos a poner a Elba. He, he will eh, bring a, a cake. Va a traer un cake. Ok, muy bien. Entonces, para, este, para esta casita necesitamos un sujeto. Necesitamos un auxiliar o modal en este caso y necesitamos un verbo en, óigame bien, ¿cómo va a estar este verbo? En base form. ¿Qué quiere decir base form? Que va a es ser la forma básica del verbo tal cual. La forma básica. Ya no necesitamos un, pas, un presente participio, perdón, un past participle. Ya no necesitamos. ¿Por qué? Porque en esta casita, en este tema, no es necesario usar los pasados participios. ¿Sí? Y pero la sí, última para, para hacerlo terminar. Perfecto, pero para hacerlo perfecto, yo tendría que agregarle el will have. Correcto. Y el verbo sí. Pero ya sería sí. otra casita, ya sería otro tema. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. ¿Me entiende? Sí. Vaya. Y para terminar, pero, la ya, última. Ya, ya lo entiendo. Ahora vamos a hacer otra casita que se llama presente. The present continuous, ¿sí? Vaya, en esta casita vamos a poner a uh, we, 
We are. Estamos estudiando. Studying. Ok. Así lo vamos a dejar para hacerlo sencillo. En esta casita usamos un sujeto. Subject. Usamos el verbo to be. Como auxiliar, ¿verdad? Y usamos un presente participio. ¿Sí? Este verbo al que, le, al que le agregamos ING le vamos a llamar presente participio. ¿Sí? Entonces, ¿qué? No necesitamos un pasado participio. No necesitamos un base form. No necesitamos un verbo en pasado. Necesitamos en esta casita que se llama presente continuo, necesitamos un presente participio. Entonces, regresando y para terminar. Estas son formas verbales, Rosemary, que solo son herramientas que me sirven para construir temas específicos. Y dentro de estas herramientas encontramos el pasado participio, que es la pregunta que usted me hizo al principio, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y esta herramienta o este elemento nos sirve para construir formas verbales. Pasados participios, y, perdón, ese, pasados perfectos y futuros perfectos. Todas las formas perfectas. Sí. Todas las formas perfectas, vamos uh -huh. a usar esta herramienta que se llama pasado participio, ¿sí? Y también se puede usar como adjetivo, pero ese es otro tema, para que no se me confunda. Uh -huh. Entonces, en todas las formas que nosotros queramos usar, eh, en formas perfectas, vamos a usar siempre el pasado participio. No el, pas el presente simple, no el pasado ni el presente participio. Vamos a usar el pasado Muy participio, bueno. ¿sí? ¿Ok? Ok. El, the grammar is very difficult. I will do something, Rosemary. I will send a video, ¿ok? Le voy a enviar un okay. video para que, para que termine de, de entender el tema, porque este tema es súper difícil. Yes. Yeah, I know. I have around, I don't know. I usually in English when I stay in middle school for three oh. years around. But I promise, I, never understand. I promise you will understand tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> when, when you see the video, I'm sure Hopefully. you will understand. <laughs> okay, Rosemary, thank you very much. Have a good night. See you tomorrow in class. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Have you. Have a good night. Okay, you too. <laughs>